Are we good, Mark? I'm ready. So my topic that I chose to do my tech talk on is, oh, I'm Steven Spellman, by the way. My topic <laughs> is uh, web scraping and how legit it is to use in an actual web application that you'll be using. Um, and so I uh, first came up with this idea because I needed an API for my side project that I'm doing, um, a fantasy football app. I needed to be able to use ESPN's API to get information about my fantasy football league. And unfortunately, um, I found this, which is four months ago, they announced their public API retirement, and they gave this little, <laughs> um, as part of that evolution we have made, that, uh, the difficult decision to discontinue our public API, which will enable us to better align engineering resources with the growing demand to develop core ESPN products on our API platform, whatever that means. So uh, I found that they are not the only one that are kind of discontinuing their API. Um, I heard that Netflix also is. Twitter is like shutting down a lot of the features of their API. Um, LinkedIn as well. So it seems to be somewhat of a growing trend. Um, not universal, but, and I don't know too much about it, but I've just seen a lot of articles about people shutting down their API. So um, when that happens, we're kind of going to need some other alternative means of getting information from sites, obviously. Um, so, does anyone, can anyone guess what I'm going to suggest? Uh, yeah, I guess. Um, so, uh, when I first pitched this idea to Joe, I was actually suggesting, um, talking about a specific web scraper that I was going to use, Komono. And he said, Steve, you're way too cool and smart to just talk about like one specific uh, web scraper. You can actually build your own and talk about web scraping in general. So that's kind of what I did. Um, it is very, very easy. Um, if you think about it, what do you need to do? You need to, one, get some HTML from somewhere, and two, target some features or some parts of that HTML. And so like, what does that sound like, targeting things in HTML? Anybody? Yeah, dude. So. <laughs> Uh, Cheerio is pretty much a, it's a module for Node that um, works like jQuery on the back end. Um, Super Agent is something we've all seen before. This is what I'll use to request um, HTML from sites pretty easily. Um, so this is a very, very simple web scraper right here on the right. This is, you just walk you through it. Can you guys see this, by the way? Sort of. Um, I don't know how to zoom in on the right, but hopefully you guys can see it. So. Um, we would just require in Express an agent for Super Agent um, and Cheerio, make our app, and then um, the way we're like triggering our web scraper is if we go to our site, um, it'll just trigger off this um, HTTP request or this AJAX request that agent is making to a URL that we defined that I kind of cut off here, um, and then on the callback. You, this is kind of where the magic happens. You get this result that you get back, which is the response from the website. And in that, the way SuperAgent does it is the HTML gets put in this text property of the result. So the, this is where the Cheerio comes in and kind of jQueryifies your result. Um, and then right here, you just res.json. Um, I'm just sending it back to my site. Uh, the this is the team name. Uh, so this URL that I gave is a um, ESPN uh, uh, team homepage. So you can get, there's just one element in the entire HTML that has a class of team name. So it should just send back to the team name. And so I will show this kind of in action real quick. Um, so. This is the regular scraper, it's the same. Actually, I think I changed it a little bit. I made it not the team name, but the image. Um, yeah. So this is going and it's triggering the HTTP request, uh, or the AJAX request um, from SuperAgent and it sends this back. This is the picture. Um, it's Tom Brady. That's my, uh, <laughs> he looks really good. Um, so, <laughs> Uh, so that's like a very, very simple example. You just scrape the data from ESPN and you got that, H or that um, image really, really easily. Um, let me get this back out of here. 
But you can imagine how powerful it can be um, if you wanted to uh, say, instead of just getting one team name, you wanted to get um, the list of players uh, that you have on your team. Uh, this is a way of doing it. Uh, you can kind of see how it's done. Um, if I want it, the ID here, this is something called uh, pagination in the URL, uh, or pagination, I don't really know how to pronounce that. Uh, <laughs> but in the URL, there's a part where it specifies the team name, or the team number, like kind of in their database. So you can just go through um, and input a, oh, I should have uh, showed this here in this picture, but there is a uh, plus I, or a uh, plus rec.params.id in this URL that I made so that you kind of like put in the ID for the URL and then you can kind of go through that page and then rec.json the players back uh, during the, uh, uh, in the response. But let me uh, show you how we do that. So instead I have a second one here called player scraper. So we do this. Uh, it's not there, so you have to go to. This is going to team one, <coughs> who is actually not me. I'll do my team. I'm team 11. Um, this is my team. Um, I'm 2 0. So, <laughs> <they're>, uh, <laughs> so, this is all my players on my team, and you can do it for 1 through 12. There's 12 teams in the league. Um, so, you can kind of just imagine uh, what if you just wanted to save all that information in your database? And you can kind of get this information. You could set this. Uh, trigger not on a get request, but on maybe a set timeout that you do it every night. So you go and update your database of what uh, each team's players are on your database every night, uh, like really easily. So this is a uh, this I thought was really really powerful and definitely something I'm going to be using in my Stackathon project, which is going to be about fantasy football. Just an FYI. Um, so oh, this is my virtual machine. So let's talk about, oh, we're not in it anymore. <laughs> uh, so some benefits of web scraping um, and potential problems. This is not how I did the fragments, OK. So the, the benefits is that of web scraping, obviously, is that over, I mean, benefits relative to an API is that sometimes you don't have an API. So it's always an option to web scrape. Um, I find that a lot of people, a lot of what I read, people are saying that um, it's easier to just kind of target the information. You see what information you want on the website, and you just go into the HTML soup and get that information via uh, tags, via class names, whatever. Um, it's not so rigid as, uh, as APIs. So uh, the, it's kind of easy to, um, to test when you're building your web scraper. Um, you can see is the information I got exactly like I want it to be, the stuff that I'm seeing on the web page, as opposed to going and getting API requests to a back-end server that you don't, it's kind of harder to visualize what's coming back and verify it. Um, companies kind of care about their front-end more than their API department, so they're less likely to have like outages on the HTML side. Um, and then sometimes it's annoying to dig through API documentation that stinks. So uh, it's, and then, I mean, you saw that I just set up this web scraper very, very easily. So, and then there's no rate limiting. I mean, we started, start getting into like ethics at some point, um, how many times you're scraping a website, but like, they can't really tell, so, so whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, uh, like I said earlier, the APIs are just very rigidly structured, so you kind of have to follow how they want you to get your, the information, as opposed to being able to do it however you want. Um, some potential problems. The obvious one is how robust your web scraper is going to be. They might change their HTML. Um, this is like the obvious big problem. And actual web scraping companies, it kind of separates which ones are better based on which ones have better algorithms to um, determine when H or to be able to adjust when HTML changes. Sometimes they can just do it on the fly and not have to change their code. So really good web scrapers will have like better algorithms. Um, there's some things that are really tricky about web scraping, um, like authenticating your web scraper so that you can get information for sites that 
uh, need to be authenticated against. Um, and so that's something that I actually tried to do, but I couldn't. So that's kind of very tricky. Um, and then there's the whole morality of web scrapers um, and if it's cool or not to do. <laughs> um, I think that really goes along with um, web scraping versus web harvesting. Um, and harvesting, I feel like, is a lot um, more unethical than scraping. I mean, harvesting, I think the the companies feel cheated. Like, people aren't actually visiting their site. They're just getting their information harvested. Um, it's called harvesting, and they're called web crawlers. So it's kind of, <laughs> and the t you can kind of imagine that, like, the people that came up with those terms were, like, angry people. Um, <laughs> and so uh, this, I can uh, show people later. This is my attempt to authenticate. It's very, very tricky. Um, but that is, uh, we can talk about that. You can talk to me about it if you want. Um, I'm very, very interested in authentication with web scrapers, and I think I might try to do my capstone on it. I don't know if Mashup did that or not. I think they did not, um, so I'd like to do that. But anyway, I'll uh, send out all the information that I had, and um, if anyone has any information that they find about web scrapers, let me know, because I'm, my interest is piqued. Um, but that's it. Is there any questions? Thank you all for sitting through it. <laughs>